Item book, turn to number 116 with me. Number 116. I think Brother Kevin likes this hymn. This is new to us too, but it's a great hymn. I can uh, report a couple of things. I visited with Lorena this afternoon a little bit. Um, her flight and everything back was, was good. Everything went well that way for her. Uh, she's got um, uh, their what they call their holiday Bible club which is like our uh, vacation Bible school this week uh, starting Tuesday through Thursday so she asked the church to pray for them there because that's pretty big that's a pretty big thing for them uh, they had I think uh, she said 11 in her Sunday school again this morning, so that's that's staying steady. That's really great for uh, a relatively new church that way. And she also asked us to pray for uh, the Sunday School Pioneer. Uh, it it was should have been done last week, but uh, she hasn't gotten started on it yet. But she said that uh, the theme of this uh, Sunday School Pioneer will be to honor the the veterans service, the service of uh, the military. Uh, that's a that's this m next month, November, will be uh, a month that is traditional for the British people to honor their military service people. And uh, it's also the 100th anniversary of World War I uh, this year. So she said she's hoping that the Sunday School Pioneer will fit well into that. Uh, so she wants to be able to get it done next month. Okay. Uh, number 116, Oh Love That Wilt Not Let Me Go. I think I have found a new favorite hymn. Shelley just laughs at me. 
because I have a multitude of favorite hymns. <laughs> well, I hear another one. I just love the, you know, when I always listen to music, uh, any kind of music, I think often I listen to the tune. And that's what I hear first is the tune, and that's got a really beautiful tune to it. But not only the tune anymore, I, I listen for the words that are uh, spoken in those hymns, and they are great. And, but when it has a great tune to go with the words, that makes it special, and it is special. I'm going to take a drink out of my cup. I, I just said that because I got a, um, a gift. Um, and I replaced my other cup that I used to have up here. And this one says uh, pastor on it. And on the back of it, it says uh, Ephesians 4, 11 through 12. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Ephesians 4, 11 through 12. What a great passage of, of Scripture. But I replaced the old one because this one has got special significance to it. So I appreciate things that uh, people give, and they mean something uh, dear to me, everything that, there's one, uh, there's one plaque that I've been given that's at home, um, and it's the one right in our living room that talks about uh, vision, where the people will perish if they don't have, if there's no vision. Uh, I think, I want to say it's Proverbs 29, um, I can't remember, the, maybe 18 or 19, somewhere in there, um, but that has special a, a special place in my heart too and I'd like to bring that one into the church here and put it in here but in order to do that I'd have to wrestle with my wife because <laughs> she likes it right where it is and likes the reminder of it right where that right where it is where you can't where you can't miss it but uh, they are special and the things that people give like that I try to bring them in and put them here to share with everybody, but they are dear. And I think uh, people that, that have given uh, those things are special, and I, wanted, I want you to know that they're special. And it's a lot specialer than that. I don't even know if that's a word. <laughs> it's more special than my old glass one that I had up here. <laughs> but thank you, Lord, for your people that you bless uh, me through, that we can bless them through. I just thank the Lord for each one. Like Shelly testified not long ago uh, when she got up here. She doesn't like to, but she thanked the Lord for each one of you, and you make uh, this special uh, to each one of us. Thank you. Even having my son-in-law here tonight with us, that, I tell you what, is, <laughs> is special to me. It really is. It's a special special thing and uh, I know the rest of the family came this morning and it it gets to be pretty busy if you're going to bring them little ones out again isn't it <laughs> you bring a couple times a day so uh, he's being faithful here tonight with us because he wasn't here this morning and that just is that's just special thank you Lord thank the Lord for my son-in-law I do <laughs> I do uh, well, let's get started before I start crying. <laughs> Lord, begin to work on our hearts like that. And uh, we, are, we are continuing, struggling, whatever it might be, through Ecclesiastes here. <laughs> and uh, I like this message. I, I hope you do. I hope it has something special in e each one of your hearts. Uh, I had good intentions. I really did. Uh, we're in chapter 7. And when I was first looking at this and studying it, I was going to do four verses, uh, verses one through four. thought it looked like a really a good point to, to break things off. But as I began to look and study and, and to go through, wouldn't you know, the Lord only give us this little piece that we're going to have. And it's going to be Ecclesiastes 7, 1 
A. Do you know what it is when you say A or B? A just means like the first, <laughs> the first half on, on this side, right? And I'll read it. It says, a good name is better than precious ointment. And that's it. When I was looking, I was like, Lord, I can't go e beyond that. That's all I can speak about is that little part right here. And we're entering an area here where Solomon is uh, speaking about things that are better than other things. Kind of maybe a comparison as he looks at this and he looks at this. These things are better than these things. But you got to keep in mind throughout this whole thing, he's still talking about human wisdom under the sun. Even though he says this is better than this, it's under the sun with man's wisdom. So many of this, a lot of this chapter actually deals with things that are better than other things. And this is the first thing that we see. A good name is better than precious ointment. As Solomon is looking and all of the education that he had and all the things that he's had opportunity to look at, he finds that, yeah, a good name is better than precious ointment. Well, what is a good name? Pretty simple. I think most people would say a good name means good character. You've got good character. That's a good name. But you know, you don't have to be a Christian to have character. You can be a non-Christian and have good morals. You can be a non-Christian and have good value system. Can't you? It's true. It really is. You know, we did a, we did a, a test one time at work when I was at the police department. And what we did is this. It may, maybe, maybe you guys have done this at your workplace. I don't know. Uh, finding your organizational values or what's important as an organization to you. And what we did is we went around the room and we asked everybody in the meeting, when you think of organizational values or you think of character of an organization, what makes that? And you know, you hear from, well, if I asked you that, let me hear from what would you say? What would make a good organization? What would make good character of the people that work at a place? Anybody? Say something. What is it? Honesty. What else? Doing what's right, even when nobody else is looking. Integrity. Any others? Hard working. You want to be a hard worker. Hard working. Any others anybody's thinking of? Dick, what do you say? Put you on the spot. <laughs> I, he, there, we got Dick's response, didn't we? Hmm. <laughs> we love it. We love Brother Dick. <laughs> Well, we could go on. We could actually spend quite a bit of time here and find different things. And what we could do is we could say, okay, if I wrote all those things down as Charity Baptist Church, that's the value system we want to have together. And that's what we're going to hold. You see, as you do that, if we did that, like when we did that when I was at the police department, a lot of those people that were a part of that weren't Christians. But they agreed that we could hold to that value system. That makes a good group of people. But that doesn't make Christians, does it? it we can say good character. Well, that's the character when Solomon says a good name is better than precious ointment. He's talking about a good name that man can have amongst men, that we can come up with just like we did just here. A good name is better than precious ointment. And if you look at precious ointment, what is precious ointment? It, it signifies those things that are costly, that are fragrant. Who wears perfume, ladies? Yeah, Shelly Shelley didn't raise her hand, but she, she puts it on every morning, right? 
<laughs> isn't that isn't that it? Isn't that it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> you get the, right you get this you get the spray out there and oh, <laughs> we go we go right through it right the fragrance costly perfume Shelly's embarrassed now I share some secrets to her <laughs> keep going keep going move move on well you know as, as Solomon's looking at this he says a good name is better than precious ointment because a lot of times well, who looks for, who looks for perfume, ladies, that's cheap? Shelly, she, she's raising her hand, but I don't think that's true. There's only one, there's one kind of, uh, we don't call it, men don't call it perfume. What do we call it? Cologne? Is it c cologne? Not aftershave, but this is a cologne. And... Uh, what, yeah, the kind, that, the kind that I like is the, what kind is that, Shelly, called? That's like Drakkar, like Drakkar, and, and it's kind of expensive. I like the smell of it, I, I really do. Yeah, that's mine, I, I'm talking about the man side. But it's, but it's costly, but ladies have another kind, different kinds that you're going to get, that spe the kind that you like, that you're going to wear. Well, the kind that I like, it, it is a little expensive. I usually get it maybe for my, my birthday or some Christmas or something like that because I don't just go and buy it. So you, hopefully you get it on one of those occasions, but I, don't, I might even do this. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, well, uh, anyway, it's that thing that usually you want to, it has some value to it. It smells good. You like it. Nobody wants to spray something on that stinks that you don't like, right? Or nobody else is going to like. You want to have something that, that smells pretty good. And it's, it's costly. So if you look at a good name and you look at the precious ointment that's costly, a good name is greater than that costly perfume or that ointment. That's what Solomon said. A good name is better than that. But we, you see, we're still looking under the sun, aren't we? We haven't broke through the clouds yet underneath the S-O-N, like Brother Kurt said. But that's where I want to take us for a minute. Solomon's talking about underneath the sun. I want to take us through the clouds. Or I want to take us underneath the S-O-N, our, our Savior. Because he says, a, he also would say a good name is better than precious ointment. I didn't give you the title of our message, but the title is A Fragrant Name. A Fragrant Name. I want you to think of a fragrant name. Yeah, a fragrant name. I want you to think of character. You see, true character is godly character. We talked about a little bit this, this afternoon. We were talking about good there isn't any, I'm, I'm going to be the first one to tell you, there isn't anything good in me except the Lord Jesus Christ in me. He makes everything good. He's the one that makes it good. But there's nothing good in me or my old nature. It's the new nature, the new creature. That's what's good. And that's what we want to move beyond. Solomon was talking about the old man. The old man, as he looked at man, could have good character that was better than the precious ointment. But Jesus wants us to look at what really matters when we look at good character is who we are in God's eyes. Who we are in His eyes. That's true character. It doesn't matter necessarily how I am in man's eyes. I mean as I am right in God's eyes with good character, it's going to reflect amongst men. But Solomon was looking man to man, good character. But it's really our relationship to Jesus Christ, and He gives good character. I love the passage, I do, from Galatians chapter 5, because I think He gives so much with character.
I call it some pieces here. It's not all of it. The fruit of the Spirit? Who's heard of the fruit of the Spirit? That's what I say is Christian character. That's godly character. And it says in Galatians 5, verse 22, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And I tell you, outside the Lord, you can try to have that character, but you're going to fail. You're not going to be able to have it. The only way you can have it is if the Lord is in you by the Holy Spirit. That is the only way. That's the fruit of the Spirit in our life. That's what true character is, is how does God see us? How is our relationship to Him? True character. I'm going to take us to a passage I got here in uh, Isaiah 9. Verse 6. It says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. S-O-N, right? A son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. That speaks to me of who God is. His greatness over us. That's what makes good character. If we can see the sun in that light in our relationship with Him, He's going to give us good character in our lives. I want to talk about the ointment for a minute. A fragrant name. You know, in the east here, and uh, where Solomon wrote, what would happen a lot of times is people would go to big banquets and stuff. When they went to those big banquets and things, you know, a lot of the people would put on the perfumes, the precious ointments, all those things. And you know, as they went in there amongst all of them, you could smell it. But you know, it spoke a little bit about money, didn't it? Being able to do that. But you know that if you've been around and somebody comes through, somebody walked through and they just squirted some perfume on and they just walked right in through this room. We'd smell it for a little bit, wouldn't we? It'd kind of sift right on through. And then after a little while, what would happen? We wouldn't smell it anymore, would we? It'd just kind of go away and we wouldn't smell it. Precious ointment. Can you just think of that person coming in to a banquet and they have that ointment on? He says a good name is better than that. But you know, you remember a, a message back a little while ago when we talked about that white stone? Raise your hand if you remember that. The white stone. Remember that white stone? You remember there's a name? That, that white stone means a lot. There's lots of significance to it. We read it in Revelation. But part of that is, you know, we've always, we, we've, we've, we sing the song that a new name written down in glory. Oh, yes, it's mine. Yes, it's mine. A new name written down in glory. Well, the opposite side of that with the white stone is I believe what it speaks of is that Jesus gives each one of us a white stone that gives us access into all the area within the millennium and all those things. Gives us access. But on that stone is written a name. But it's not my name and it's not your name. It's a name that He's given you in your relationship to Him. It's a special name. You know, just like Shelley's got some special names. I won't say all of them. Love Bucket's one of them. <laughs> Love, <laughs> Love Bucket. <laughs> that's, just one, <laughs> that's just one of them. 
There's a lot of them. But you know, it's, that's special. It's a special name that we have. You know, I could write it on the, a white stone and it means something. And that's what the Lord's going to do with you and I. There's a special name that he's going to... Dick can't get over that. He's still laughing about it. <laughs> yeah, it was good. He was laughing. <laughs> I know. Well, there's a significance between that name and you're going to have it. You're gonna, and you're going to be able to be in relationship with Jesus. And you're going to be able to call Him that special name. And you know what's so important about that? It's a name between the two of you. Signifying your personal relationship with Him. You know, that relationship that we have with Him. That is where we get the good character, where we get the good name. There's a lady in the scripture that God gave a good name to. And he promised her that wherever the scripture was read, her name would be remembered. And I want to take us there. I want to take us there for, for a moment. And it's the account that I'm going to read is from Mark 14. Starting in verse 3. You're going to be familiar with this as we read it. But as we read this, I want you to be, to be thinking about the title. A fragrant name. A fragrant name. Verse 3 starts off and it says, And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment, a spikenard, very precious, and she broke the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. And Jesus said, let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. For you have the poor with you always. And whensoever you will, you may do them good. But me you have not always. She has done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. We see a good name. We see a late. We see special. We see precious ointment, don't we? The precious ointment had a great value. But the great value in that ointment meant nothing to her, but her relationship to the Lord was greater than that ointment. She took the ointment and she anointed the Lord with it, didn't she? And other people were upset. You could have sold it, you could have given it to the poor, but she takes it. And anoints the Lord and, and He speaks to her that her name, a good name that she had with Him, wherever the Gospel was preached throughout the whole world, it was going to go forth. Now I want to read another. I don't, some people say these two accounts are the exact same accounts and I'm not convinced of that. But I want to read this other account of another lady that also anointed the Lord. And I'll let you guys do the, the work to whether or not those two are the same or not, or whether you believe that they are, but it's from John chapter 12. Starting in verse 1.
Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. I would have wondered what that would have been like. This is after Lazarus has been raised from the dead. And he's there at the table with the Lord too. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bare what was put therein. Then said Jesus, let her alone. Against the day of my burying has she kept this. For the poor always you have with you, but me you have not always. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. A fragrant name. You see, Solomon talked about a good name, a good name is better than, than special ointment or precious ointment. A good name underneath the sun. Now I want to take, we've broke through the clouds to the true sun underneath him. And he says, a good name. A good name in relationship with him and worship to him is better than precious ointment. But I want you to see, I want you to see the greatness here. And the greatness that I see here is what happens with a good name. If you look at the good name and you look at the precious ointment together. Solomon said a good name is better than precious ointment. And I think the Lord says a good name leaves precious ointment. I want you to see this picture. What did Mary do? But she took the precious costly ointment and she anointed her Savior. She worshipped Jesus right there amongst all those other people. In this passage talked about how that ointment moved around amongst all the people. So she's worshiping. If she's worshiping Jesus, what is happening with all the spikenard? The aroma is moving through the place where all of them are. And I've got to tell you, they've got to be captivated by the smell. And they're wondering, where on earth is that coming from? They're taken back to Mary and what she's doing, her good name and worshiping her Savior, and how that affected everybody that was there. A fragrant name. You know, I think the Lord wants you and I to not only have a, a good name better than, that, better than precious ointment, but he wants us to have a fragrant name. That means because of who we are and who Jesus sees us as. In our relationship to him, no matter where you and I go, we want to leave spikenard, precious ointment, the smell of perfume around where we go. That's what the Lord wants us to do. When we go to work, and you're around people at work, and we deal with people at work. You talk with people. We want to leave when we've been in a room the odor of Jesus Christ. That they are taken back in awe 
And they're like, what was that? That person, that good name that they have has affected me. The fragrance, the fragrance of who the Lord is in us pours forth in our lives before other people. Isn't that what Jesus wants in us? What did he say about the lady in Mark? Wherever the gospel is preached, her name will be remembered. Don't you want your name? I, I mean, really, who you were for Jesus Christ. It wasn't necessarily that it was all her name, but it was what she did with the Lord. Who the Lord was to her. That was a good name. And we want that left in the lives of everybody that we're around. You know, and that's what Shelley said when we mentioned something about character. Character is doing the right thing even when somebody's not looking. That's character. True character. Doing the right thing even when nobody is looking. Have you been, I want you to think about your name. Your name with the Lord. Have you been leaving a fragrant name behind where you go? And how you have reacted, how you've been, that's what the Lord wants. The fragrance going about. We move into a room, wherever we go, when we speak about the Lord, just how, you know, that's, I, that's really a, a piece what i got to tell you that I've appreciated with Elaine coming. You know, I gotta, when she comes through that door, she has got a smile on her face, she's got a love in her heart, and she comes in, and she's amongst us, and that's that aroma. That's that relationship that she's got with the Lord. And it, it's infectious to all of us. That's what the Lord wants us to do. You know, we ask ourselves at times, can that really be real in our life? I believe it can. We saw it with Mary here. She had it with her love for the Lord. And other people could smell that, were a part of that, and they were drawn into that. A fragrant name. Oh Lord, I want to have a fragrant name, Lord. I, Elaine, my sister in the Lord, is a good example to me for a fragrant name. Where she goes, we visited with her last Sunday, Shelly and I did, and she said somebody had come up to her and said something about her smile. They noticed it too, that smile that she had. But she said, you know, the Lord's given me that. The Lord's given me that smile. The Lord's given me that, count, that countenance. The Lord's changed my life. Are you excited about the change that the Lord's done in your life? When we're excited about it, other people are going to be infected with it, aren't they? And it's going to draw them. They're going to really say, can anybody be like that, really? Yes, you can. Only a saved, redeemed person can be that way. And truly be true to their heart. And truly have a good name. That's what I want to be. I hope that's what you want to be. God help us as a church here, a local body, that when we go about and we're talking with people, that we leave that sweet aroma with them. And that we love them. You know, I've got to share this. I, I was, I've been thinking about what are we going to do here as a church when it snows again. Like if we have snow like we had last year. Because I've got to tell you, I got awful wore out. <laughs> I got wore out shoveling snow here last year. And trying to shovel like the parking lot and stuff out there. So Shelly says, well, you know what we need to do? We need to get a four-wheeler or something that's got a blade on it so we can kind of get things cleared out uh, out here. So she says that, and I'm, I'm actually over here at the office, and I've been praying and stuff, and the, the Lord 
is directing me to go out to Polaris. Why? Because I don't want to buy a four-wheeler. I, re- I know, you know, I'm seeing dollar signs. Remember, the Lord was speaking to me last week with money and those things. So I see four-wheeler with a, you know, a plow on it. I see dollar signs, right? Dollar signs with it. So that's the last place I want to be. But the Lord is directing me to Polaris. I'm over here, pray- Lord, don't you want me just to pray? Can I just, well, wouldn't you know, I go out to Polaris. I park up front there. Never been out there to that new building. And there's this guy that's driving a four-wheeler from the back, and he comes up, and he's getting ready to load it on a train. And I said, you know that man? That, I know who that is. I just can't picture who that is right now. I'm like, who, who, Lord, who is that? I know him. And then, when I got out of the van and I looked over him, I knew who it was. It was Rich Miller. And we've been praying for him at different times here because he's got cancer. Then I go into, uh, he's loading up the four-wheel, and I, I go into Polaris. I walk around looking like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's like, well, there happens to be a lady in there. She immediately sees me. And she comes over to visit with me. It's Rich's wife. And I want to, I had, oh, Jane. And did she go by, it seemed like her name used to have a different, besides Jane, like, is Jane. I thought it used, like Mary Jane or something, but she go, goes by Jane. And she came over. <clears throat> and I began to visit with her. And I began to understand really quickly that I wasn't there for a four-wheeler. Oh, my, 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 the Lord didn't truly take me out there necessarily because of a four-wheeler, but was to take time to visit with her and to visit with her husband who then came in and to share with one another they'd just been to the doctor that day. And just some things that really sunk real deep in their heart. And I think they were trying to keep themselves busy. You know, about doing things and going and getting a four-wheeler and stuff. But right there in the middle of Polaris, we weren't looking at four-wheelers. We were talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. How He loves us. They were sharing their heart where they were. And we're, I got we're right there in the middle of the shop. We're getting, we're crying. I mean, we're, we're, we're teared up over the things that we're sharing right there. And how the Lord is great, but the Lord is good. And we're saying these things right there. And I, and I begin to think, what is everybody else thinking all around in the, in the office? And I, and I was just, it was a picture to me of the message here. I was praying that the Lord was working, that as we were there, a good name with the Lord had to leave precious ointment in that building before we left. That was, that was the Lord. I got to tell I didn't know why. I knew why the Lord took me there. And that's what it was for. The Lord knows that, doesn't He? He knows He knows all those things that we can't see and we don't know. You know, Sandy had mentioned them. It's been quite a while ago <clears throat> as we were praying and stuff for them. And I have not seen them. Been able to relate with them since she shared that. But it became real. And I have to, we love them. I gave them my business card. And I said, I know you guys are going to church. I do. But I want to give you this. And if you need anything, I want you to call. And we will be there. She like took that card. And it was like, oh, it was, 
It wasn't the Bible, I don't want to say it, but it was like, I'm not letting it go. I'm not letting it go. Because there's something special. And God gave us, God gave us that together. And it was special. That's what we're talking about right here. Oftentimes we run in like that. And I need to leave and I don't take the time. I don't understand why God's brought me there. But there by the Lord was sweet, precious ointment in the Lord. That's what he wants us to do. We pray for them. We have prayed for them. But it became real to me that day with them, person to person. A fragrant name is what the Lord wants us to have. God help us. Help us to be that type of people for you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for how you've worked in my heart in this message, Lord. And I want to have that fragrant name, Lord. And I don't want it for my glory. I don't want it for a pat on my back. Lord, I want it for you. And I want you to give me the ability, Lord, in your spirit, in who you are in my life, and my relationship with you, that when I go to different places, and I'm amongst different people, Lord, that you help me and you help my brothers and sisters here, Lord, leave that fragrant name. And it's the name, Lord, the new name that you've given us in you. Lord, help us to do it. Lord, help us to help us to break through the clouds and to be underneath the S-O-N and not where Solomon was here as he had understanding of it being better to have a good name versus precious ointment. Help us to see what you have designed with it, Lord, underneath you. Direct us, Lord, and lead us in Jesus' name, amen.